now let's try to minimize if a functional dependency set the reason why do you, why we want to minimize this it will be easy to represent uh, you know lots of functional dependencies in a smaller form if you have very less functional dependencies and which is going to convey the same meaning it is obviously easy for us to store it in the computer isn't it so uh, what i mean to say is if you have a set of functional dependencies f and if you could minimize it to other set of functional dependencies g in such a way that g covers f and f covers g and g is minimal so what do i mean by minimal is you will not be able to delete either the right hand side of a production or sorry either right hand side of a fd or the left hand side of a fd and you could still maintain this property right that is called minimal minimal means you cannot delete anything from it further so once let us say you got a you got a functional dependency set g in such a way that it is covering f and f is covering g which means both are equivalent to each other and moreover g is minimal which means you will not be able to delete anything from g and still have this property in such a way that if you could if you could get something right then we can say that g is minimal right uh, minimal cover of f so what is the advantage it contains very less number of productions and moreover it contains less number of attributes uh, you know in the left hand side so anyway if a, if a fd set is already in its minimal form you will not be able to minimize it in case if it is not in the minimal form you will be able to minimize it right let's see the procedure if you follow few steps it will be easy right yes you can obviously use that uh, you know the properties of functional dependencies but it's going to take a lot of time and you know the answer might not be right also so we shall have a different pro different procedure if you follow that procedure always a minimal set is guaranteed if it is if it exists okay now see this procedure to minimize this set first step is split the fds in such a way that right hand side contains single attributes always see that right hand side is going to contain single attributes before you apply the procedure because it will be easy for us to you know eliminate it that way so see this if i have a determines bc then break it into a determines b and a determines c why is it important is by breaking it this way we can determine whether we could remove b or we could remove c or we could remove both of them so if i have both of them in combined manner i am not able to test if b is redundant or c is redundant once i split it then i can test if b is redundant or c is redundant independently okay and next one is find the redundant fds and delete them from the set so once you split it like this find the redundant fds and delete it from the set when can you say that fd is redundant you remove that fd and see that from the remaining fds you are able to derive it somehow which means see this if you have any set like this containing a determines b b determines c and a determines c right so here you can remove a determines c because you will be able to derive this even without it which means without this if you try to find out a plus that contains c right if we, we, we using these two only if you try to find out a plus what you get a b and c which means without this we are able to get a plus which contains c therefore it is obviously redundant so that is why you could remove it next one is find the redundant attributes on the lhs and delete them so you can even find redundant attributes on the lhs left hand side for example if i have you know fds a b determines c right then one of them may be redundant and that one you can easily find out you know in this way see this you find out b plus if b plus contains a then this is redundant okay it is not a straight forward to understand just think about it see if b plus contains a then a is redundant here the reason is the entire purpose of this fd is to de derive c determine c isn't it now when you try to start with only you know when you try to have a b plus definitely you are going to get c fine and in case if b has the capacity to determine a then b plus will first contain a and then using a b you know you can determine c therefore this turns out to be redundant got it so in case if b plus contains a 
a is not required for this functional dependency because just with b plus you will be able to get a and anyway you know a b is going to imply uh, c right therefore you know if you if a a plus contains b right then b you know you can easily delete b or if b plus contains a you can delete a got it now let's see this example with this example i'll explain you all these steps maybe it might be clear then okay so first step is you try to split them so step number one is you try to split them in such a way that right hand side contains only one attribute see first production a determines c only one attribute is there and ac determines d only one attribute is there e determines a one attribute is there i am splitting it okay e determines d one attribute and then e determines h now what you do is take each production one by one and see without that if that production could be covered by the remaining which means if i delete it right then without it i'll see if this this one can be covered by the remaining a determines c from the remaining i'll try to find out a plus if i find out a plus from the remaining what do i get i get a that's it i think nothing else therefore a plus does not contain c which means without this production a does not have the capacity to determine c therefore it is required got it and now let's see about this take this one and delete this and from the remaining which means this one this one this one and this one you try to see if uh, you know it could be covered so without this production i'll just try to find out ac plus if i find out ac plus i get ac that's it nothing else and i don't get d therefore without this production ac will not be able to determine d therefore this production is required and now let's see this so take this production delete it and you know in the remaining production see if you could get that a in e plus let us find out e plus e plus contains e and because of e i get d and h right but there is no way i can get a in fact in fact there is no other production which can determine a without this check that a is not present as right hand side anywhere so there is no way you will be able to determine a unless it is in the left hand side right therefore it is required and what about this let's see this without this without this production you try to find out e plus and you see if d can be de derived so if i find out e plus then it contains e right and because of e i get a and because of a i get c and because of a c i get d yes so even h is also present but it it doesn't matter so e plus is going to contain d therefore without this production i am still able to get d therefore this production is useless got it so sorry this uh, fd is useless right so you can uh, actually uh, delete that fd now what about this one again do the same thing assume that it is already deleted don't take into consideration now let's check this one e e determines h so without this right and without this in fact because that that has all, already been de you know deleted now without these two just find out e determines h and see if uh, you will be able to get anything here right so e determines h i'm i'm going to find out uh, e plus without these two because it is also it is already found out to be redundant and removed and now we are going to remove it and see in the remaining if we are going to get h so anyway we are not going to get h because it is simple see this right hand side of any of the other productions does not contain h so how can i get h here there is no way isn't it unless the right hand side of other productions contain h we cannot get it see in this case right hand side of other productions contain d that is why i am able to de you know de determine d without using this production so there is no it is not possible so it cannot be deleted right so it turns out that only this particular uh, fd can be deleted not the others so after deleting this particular fd should i again check if anything is become redundant actually after adding something some other production might get redundant after deleting something some other production might not get deleted therefore 
therefore you can just do it one time and, and and stop it which means just go through it in one cycle and you find out what are the functional dependencies that could be you know, deleted and once you find out delete them and leave it okay you need not do it second time now let's go to the second step so what is second step see first step in fact you know decides about the right hand side so since right hand side is containing only one attribute deleting fd is nothing but deleting right hand side isn't it so first step is about finding out the uh, sorry it is let's say it is second step right this entire thing is second step this writing this is first step and deleting it is second step okay now second step is about finding out the redundancies in the right hand side deleting fd is nothing but deleting the right hand side since right hand side has only one attribute and the third step is about deleting redundancies in the left hand side now when will there be redundancy in the left hand side whenever there is more than one attribute in the left hand side right so if there is only one attribute in the left hand side or if there is only one attribute in the right hand side that will be taken care in the second step because deleting the fds is nothing but deleting the left hand side if there is only one attribute or deleting the right hand side if there is only one attribute now when there are more when there is more than one attribute then we go to the third step in this we shall see if in the left hand side if you have more than one attribute if you could delete one of the attributes right so from the from the remaining set what is remaining set a determines c is remaining a c determines d is remaining e determines a and e determines h these four are remaining now if we want to find out what could be deleted from this further so with these things we need not check about them because they have already been taken care of here right so only concern is this one now is a redundant when will a be redundant if c plus contains a then you need not write a here the reason is you can find out c plus first and c plus if it anyway if c plus if it anyway contains a then ac is going to determine c therefore c is just enough to determine d right so uh, are you getting this if c plus contains a then you find c plus it is going to gi give you ac and then ac is going to determine d anyway therefore writing c determines d is enough right so let's find c plus in this entire production and in this entire thing c plus right and then uh, you know we shall see if c plus contains a either you include it or you don't include it it doesn't matter while you are finding c plus either you include it or don't include it it doesn't matter because it is already contain a, containing ac unless c plus contains a right this this functional dependency doesn't make any change so when you are testing for this extra redundancy on the left hand side either you have it or don't have it doesn't matter when you are talking about the right hand side you are supposed to remove it and then test it in the remaining but when you are talking about the left hand side you need not uh, you know delete this production either you have it or don't have it it really doesn't matter okay now what does c plus contain it contains c only c isn't it it does not contain a therefore a is required now what about uh, a plus if a plus contains c then c can be deleted now let's see a plus a plus contains c from here that is this is enough you need not take it further right so you just found out that a plus contains c you can stop it here and you can say that c is redundant right so this is the only production which has two attributes right and one of the attribute turned out to be redundant then what what did we get we got a determines c and then a determines d and then e determines a and then e determines h got it right so this is the minimal set if you want you could actually merge it right how can you merge it a determines c and a determines d you can you would have written it as a determines c d right and e determines a and a determines h you could have written it as e determines a h right therefore this is the minimal set for this set so you know you have actually minimized it into two productions given four productions we got two productions right fine so anyway uh, you know minimal minimal means uh, you should not be able to reduce anything and you should not be able to get the same thing and and you know if you have any doubt after doing this procedure i suggest that you just see if both of them cover each other right which means you should be able to get this production from there see this 
A plus should contain CD here. So if you find out A plus, A plus contains AC and AC contains, you know, because of AC we got D. Therefore, this one is covered. And E plus should contain, e, you know, uh, AH here. So E plus will contain AD and H. Yes, it is covered. And now this one should be covered here, which means A should be able to derive C. Yes. And AC should be able to derive D. Yes. In fact, A, A itself is able to derive D. And E should be able to derive AD. E is able to derive A and A is able to derive D, right? And E, e should be able to determine H, right? Yes, e, e is able to determine H, right? Therefore, both are covered by each other and so they are equivalent. And moreover, it is containing minimal number of attributes, which means you cannot delete anything from this further and you can get the same property holding. What is the property? Both cover each other, right? This is how you can minimize it, okay? Hi, if you are planning to do masters, then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in India. I'll give you all the reasons. So, first reason is, out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So, all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral. Which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested, in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.